UN says more than 40,000 foreign fighters traveled to Syria and Iraq between 2011 and 2016. Around 5,000 of them came from Europe. But over the past few years, many have started to go back home. And governments around the world are concerned about the security risks they may pose. The UK Parliament is seen as having taken the most drastic steps and has stripped some foreign fighters of their citizenship. When we assess that someone poses a real threat, we will work to stop them from returning. Sometimes to do that, I have to deprive people of their British nationality. I continue to do so to keep this country safe. The most prominent case is that of Shamima Begum. She left the UK in 2015 when she was 15 to join Daesh in Syria. Her citizenship was revoked after she was found in a refugee camp in northern Syria earlier this year. I was just hoping that Britain would understand that I made a mistake, like a very big mistake, and it was because I was young and naive and I was newly practicing. I didn't know what Islam was. Britain is also considering doing the same to a British Canadian Muslim convert named Jack Letts. He joined Daesh as a teenager and is now being held in a prison in northern Syria. To begin with, because you know, I'm the reason they're going through this. And... Germany too is planning to strip the citizenship of any of its citizens who hold a second nationality and who fight abroad for groups like Daesh. And there's growing pressure in Sweden, Denmark and other countries to do the same. But according to international law, making a person stateless is illegal and poses particular problems for children born in war zones. All member states have to do every measure possible to ensure the protection, the prosecution, the repatriation, the rehabilitation and reintegration of these women and children uh, in compliance with their obligations under international law. It also poses financial and security problems for countries with fighters caught trying to get home. In Turkey, there are 729 foreign fighters in detention. One of them is Sufya Mustafa Kemal. He arrived in Syria in 2013 and remained there as a fighter for six years. He was stripped of his British citizenship in 2017 after being suspected of belonging to a terrorist organization. Government officials say Kamal would not be stateless because he's entitled to Moroccan citizenship since his mother was born there. But he told us he's never been to the North African country or held a Moroccan passport. He's also the son of a notorious preacher, Abu Hamza al-Masri, who was extradited from the UK to the US in 2012. Three years later, he was convicted of supporting terrorism and sentenced to life imprisonment. Kamal has been held at this high security facility near the city of Izmir since January. He gave us this exclusive interview. Explain to me, why did you decide to leave the UK and go to Syria? Um, uh, firstly, because of humanity purposes. When you see people being killed, um, displaced, as time passed by, and by the time 2013 came, it was uh, the Syrian people needed to hold arms. They had no other options. So when I saw that happening, I decided to go and join the rebels. What was the process? Did anyone meet you when you got there? Uh, there wasn't any processes in terms of foreign fighters coming in. It's just uh, chaos, as you know. The North uh, fell in the hands of the rebels, so there's no government there anymore. There's no law and order during that period. Um, so anyone that would like to come and join the Syrian revolution, for example, they can just come in and join. Were you ever a member of Daesh? No. Were you ever tempted? No. Were you ever approached? Uh, I think they had a lot of methods to recruit people through the media, even within the Northern Territory, but... Uh... Were you ever personally approached by Daesh while no. you were in Syria? No. Were you ever a member of Al-Qaeda or any Al-Qaeda-related Al no. affiliated group in Syria? No. Were you ever tempted to join them? No. Why weren't you part of any organised group? A lot of rivalry is happening within the Syrian revolution. So I decided not to join any of these groups and to stay um, independent and just work alongside the, these groups. 
How did you get your weapons? You buy your, your own weapons. How do you buy them? On the market. Every area has its own market. You can buy your own weapons. You, uh, you've been to Idlib, you've seen, for example, each area would have um, a military shop. You just go in there and you just say, I want this type of weapon and you buy it. No questions asked? No questions asked. When there's no law and order in place, people can go and establish their own organizations. People can go and establish um, whatever they want to establish. And the only language that's, that's understood in this territory is, is, is uh, uh, force, They're using force against people. What kind of weapons did you have? Um, small arms, small arms weapons. Like what, for example? I don't know much about them, so can you just... Uh, AK-47, just... uh, PKC, uh, different weapons. Was that the first time in your life that you'd um, possessed an, and used an, uh, a weapon? Yes, yes. You were in Syria for six years. You must have fought on the front line many, many times. How often was it? Was it every day? War is, uh, is, is as it is. We don't hand the sweets to the other side. War is either I get killed or he get, kills me. Any idea of how many people you may have killed? No. Does it affect your conscience? No. You're, you're very comfortable with the fact that you killed these soldiers? Yes. You've had your citizenship revoked. How does that make you feel? I'm shocked to see the British government going down to that level where um, you're guilty without even standing a trial in front of a judge. Even in the Arab world where dictators are uh, in power in that, in that area, um, you, you might go to prison and you might be tortured. The reality is you actually stand in front of a judge. Whereas in Britain, they revoke people's citizenship, um, fighters, they've deemed them as terrorists, aid workers, they've deemed them as terrorists, journalists, they've deemed them as terrorists. They say it's on sus suspicion of you having engaged in terrorist mm -hmm. activities. Uh, what's your response? If Britain has a problem with us, with us let us stand in front, of, in, some, in front of a judge and let's prove the evidence. Do not just revoke people's citizenship and leave them stranded in countries such as Turkey. You chose to leave. No problem. But the, the reality is for the British government to say this is justified, we're going to revoke this person's citizenship without giving him a fair trial, it's not justified. Even my entire file is secret. Is secret. I can't even have a look at it. My lawyer can't have a look at it. What type of justice is that? Were you happy living in the UK? Did you enjoy living there? Yes. I'm very grateful for the 18 years that I had in the UK. What do you miss about living in England? Um, just uh, friends friends in the society and I don't have a war with Britain uh, nor am I going around and, 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 and saying that we uh, we must have have problem with the British government or anything but I do have a problem with the British government in the sense that revoking people's citizenship and not allowing them to have a fair trial is a very big problem. Do you consider yourself British? No, not after my citizenship revoked. Why not? It gave me a time to really think about my identity. When when a, when a government, uh, such as the British government, revokes my citizenship within seconds and uh, leaves me stranded in, in a country such as Turkey, uh, it, it gave me time to really think about my identity. Has your father influenced you? Your father is, of course, Abu Hamza al-Masri. Mm. Uh, and we know that he fought in Bosnia, we, he fought in Afghanistan. <coughs> Did that have any bearing on your decision to go and fight in Syria? No. In fact, he didn't even know that I was in Syria until I was in Syria. None so the fact family. that he himself has, and he has called for violent jihadism, he has uh, fought in Bosnia, fought in mm. Afghanistan, so you're telling me that had absolutely no influence on you whatsoever, no. your decision? I'm proud of him fighting against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. I'm proud of him fighting against the Russians in, uh, in Bosnia. But that's his path, that's, that's the path he's chosen. I've, I've chosen to go as, as well the same path, but he had no influence in it. I don't agree with everything my father says, but I will not look at him as what the media made him to be, a villain. The decisions my father made, um, the things he done in his life, that's it. I'm, I'm in no way to comment about it or speak about it or, or have any influence about it. It's his life. Because, because the, the person that sits in front of you is not Abu Hamza al Mazri, Sufyan Mustafa. He is the f most person I respect in this world. What is it about your father that you admire so much? Uh, he's my father at the end of the day. He's, he's the person that uh, looked after me and brought me up during those years. Unfortunately, he was taken away from me when I was 11 years old. Um, but nevertheless, I had uh, a lot of interaction with him when he was in prison. Um, we spoke about many things and uh, every time we would speak, we'd speak about, for example, being a better person within society. Do you miss him? Yes.
What do you think when you think about him? Uh, I don't know. Shall always see him soon. What would you say to him now if you saw him? I would tell him to be patient. Just to be clear, if you could do it all over again, you would, you would not change a thing. You would still go back, do what you did. Yes. To Syria, yes. And uh, the, the, the Syrian revolution was just the beginning of me. Uh, if, if the British government assumes that I'm coming out of Syria regretting that I was in Syria and I'm, willing, and, and I'm begging the British government to return, it's, no, no, no. Do you have any regrets? If the British government ever thinks that I will ever apologise or, or I regret going to Syria, they're mistaken. They're completely mistaken. If there is one fighter, one foreign fighter in this, the whole entire Syrian revolution that does not feel any remorse and, and any regret whatsoever for going to Syria, it's me. There are so many other ways that you could have helped the Syrian people. There are so many humanitarian workers there, people providing medical assistance. You could have chosen any of that, but you chose to fight. Some people are good for war. Some people are good for medicine, for, for, for being aid workers. Some people are good at being a doctor. I just chose the path of war. Just so you because... think you're good at war? I, I like to think so, yeah.